What is up you guys? I hope you're all doing well. I'm Tony Fuentes. Welcome back to my channel and to the Edlag series. So in this case, we're going to analyze the profile from Thomas Lotter. Now Thomas is a German photographer who resides, well, in Germany. He travels a lot and his style varies depending on the location that he is and the season which he takes that photograph. So we're going to jump into Instagram guys, analyze his style, break it down. And then in Lightroom, we're going to create a preset or several presets depending on how many styles we want to replicate and then apply it to certain photographs to see how they perform. Now, Thomas's style was recommended by one of you guys in the comment section down below. So remember to put down in the comments any profile that you want me to analyze or any videos that you're interested in me talking about. So let's jump into Instagram and analyze his style. So guys, this is Thomas's profile on Instagram, Lotter underscore live. If you want to check it out and support him, he's very talented, guys. And the first thing that we can notice is that his style, if we scroll down, changes from season to season. Here we have these ones taken in Iceland, which are very blue very blue very contrasty and then if we scroll down we arrive to this abrupt change to his more regular style which is very uh, very emerald like greens and very cobalt like blues this is the most predominant style that he has on his feet as you can see the water in his images always is towards a very deep and very cobalt like blue it's nothing towards the aquas or anything like that and the greens are very emerald and very artificial then if we keep scrolling down, well, well, we have to scroll down quite a bit because this is his main style. We arrive to the these photographs that he took in Norway, which are very blue. And then if we scroll down a bit more, we arrive to the white of the winter, which is completely white, completely desaturated, uh, particular style. And then if we scroll even more, we arrive to his autumn photos. Yeah. So the changes on his style are very abrupt guys we're going to concentrate on his main style which is the green very vibrant very emerald like greens and the bluish tones and maybe we'll do this one guys the iceland style which is his latest uh, iteration on his style so we're talking about his latest style over here so if we click on an image over here the first one that we can see is that it's a lot of contrast guys over here the sky is overexposed then we have some harsh contrast over here with the blacks slightly raised if you can see the interface on Instagram is completely black then the blacks that we have here are slightly um, faded out so that's done in the tone curve then another thing that I like have noticed is that this image the shadows are lifted so we have a bit more information in the dark parts of the image and then the blacks are very crushed so we have that nice contrast one thing that's very apparent guys in these sets of images is that there's a blue tint in the shadows now that's done in the color grading part which used to be the split toning now the blue that he has in these images of Iceland is a very dark and very deep blue. It's nothing towards the aquas or anything like that, not a teal color. If we click on this image, here we can see those bluish tones in the highlights over here and also in the shadows of the mountain down here. Everything is tending towards that cobalt like blue. Also the sea is a very dark blue guys. It's nothing towards the aquas or anything or emeralds. Some people like to change them into the emerald tones and he does it towards a more deep light blue. Another thing that we can notice in his style over here in this one in particular is the reddish tones are dimmed down in the luminance tab on HSL. So that's the thing that we want to remember. And then the greens, well, the greens are not existent. They're changed towards the yellowish making it look like if it was really a very winterish, a very winterish uh, conditions in these images. Well, they are, but still the greens are turned towards the yellowish. That's the thing that we have to remember. Now, one thing that he does, guys, for example, in the previous image is add some clarity to the landscapes. Here we can see that this image is harsh and very contrasty, a lot of clarity, a lot of texture. But when he shoots portraits, for example, in this one, we can see that the clarity is slightly dimmed down so it's not too apparent so the skin tones are quite nice and soft so that's the thing that we have to remember now over here there's no information in the dark parts of the image i know that this is the black sand beach so everything in the sand in the ground is black very volcanic but still we don't see uh, his pants guys basically because the contrast is very high the blacks are very dimmed down this is a very contrasty style in comparison to his base style that we're going to edit further along so this is basically his Iceland style very blue very deep and very contrasty that's a thing that we have to remember so this style is basically just a variation on his main style okay down to his main style the first thing that we can notice is that there's a lot of emerald greens now these greens aren't very vibrant or very yellowish they're more towards the bluish tones that's why they're so cold and they're very uniform so that's the thing that we want to remember for the hsl color grading we want to take the greens all the way down to the emeralds and the 
yellows all the way down to the greens to make them more towards the coldish tones. Another thing that we can notice is that there's a slight bluish hue in the highlights and also in the shadows that's done in the color grading part. And then we have the faded out blacks. Now we can see the black on the interface over here. And well, basically the black is non-existent in this image. It's more towards the grayish tones. Another thing that's very apparent guys is the glowing or diffusion effect in the highlights. That's done with a filter, a diffusion filter or black pro mist. I have mine over here. Also, you can fake it. I already did a video on how to fake it in post edition over here. I'll link it up if you want to check it out. So again, those bluish tones in the water, that's a very a constant thing in his feed. Keep scrolling down. Again, landscapes, landscapes have a nice clarity added to them to make it a bit more sharp. But again, portraits are more soft. The skin tones uh, maintaining their softness with less clarity to the negative. So in this one we can see again those emerald greens and that bluish tint towards the highlights and also towards the shadows to make a bit more contrasty, very cold environment representing the dolomites of course. And then over here we added, it's not vignette guys because we don't see any black over here. It's basically just a gradient filter darkening some parts of the image, but he does use some vignette in some cases. If we keep scrolling down, we can see that the style repeats itself. It's basically the same preset. We can see those lush, very emerald like greens. And then we have those bluish tones in the highlights and in the shadows and also very nice blues in the water over here. Here we can see once again, those bluish tones that we want to achieve in the water if we have any water in our images. In my case, I don't think I have any of them. But again, those emeralds over here, we lose some information in the shadows because of the raising of the blacks and also adding some clarity and that harsh contrast with the diffusion effect. So those are the things that we have to keep in mind, guys, to replicate his style. So let's jump into Lightroom and edit this. So guys, once in Lightroom, we have all these images and none of them are as good as Thomas's photos. But again, the purpose of these tutorials are the color grading part. Remember that the preset that we're going to create is going to be in the edit like preset pack, which will be linked down below the mobile and the desktop versions. If you want to go check it out, that preset pack contains all the presets that we've analyzed in this series, including Peter McKinnon, Alan Pelander, Paul Clavero, Monaris. All of them are in that preset pack. There are more than 25 presets in those packs. Anyway, um, so we have these two images to replicate the Iceland style over here, which are shot in a volcano and a volcano crater. And the other ones are dedicated towards that emerald style that he has. So let's start off by editing this one, guys. We're going to go to the develop tab. And again, the first thing that we want to do in the basic corrections is to obtain more information in the highlights and in the shadows and also the nice contrast that he has that's done all the way down from the basic corrections over here from the exposure all the way down to the tone curve so let's start off by making the image a lot more bright to achieve more information in the highlights and also in the shadows now we can move the sliders just by clicking on them and drag them up and down we can also introduce a numeric number over here if we want to be a bit more precise and also you can put the cursor over the name of the value over here and with minus or plus on your keyboard you can alter the values by a five percent so the first thing i want to do guys is just bring back a little bit of the highlights and pull up a bit of the shadows to obtain a little bit more information in those parts so the highlights i'm just going to drag them down all the way, into, the way down to around the minus 35 and then the shadows, if we drag them up, we can see that everything brightens and the dark parts of the image have a bit more information. Just going to drag them up around the 53% is where I'm going to settle. And then the whites, we're going to bring them down. The whites control the brightest parts of our image. I'm just going to bring them down around to a minus 33. And the blacks, we want to retain that harsh contrast. So just pull them down to a minus 20. Something like that, guys. Then in presence tab, remember that. He uses some clarity when he shoots landscapes, but when he shoots portraits, he doesn't use any of that clarity and texture. So I'm just going to leave them at zero, but this is a, a landscape guy. So in this case, I would pull up the texture just a bit to make a bit more emphasis on the sharpness of the image. But well, for purpose of this tutorial to create the preset, I'm just going to leave them at zero and we're going to alter them depending on the situation. Then the haze. Now remember that we had that diffuse effect in the highlights. We can emphasize that if we don't want to go to post edition or if we don't have the pro mist or the fusion filter, just pull down a bit of the haze to a minus 10 around there. And as you can see, the highlights start to have that nice haze or a halo around them. Now in vibrance and saturation, what we're gonna do is desaturate a bit of the image. Now these two values are different guys. Saturation will basically desaturates or saturates every single color at the same values. So for example, if we go to a minus 50 or minus 60, 
in the desaturation over here, we can see that every single color has been desaturated. Now Vibrance does another thing guys. If we go to the minus 60 on the Vibrance, we can see that some of the colors, the most dominant colors of the image, like the greens over here, remain dominant with a bit more saturation and the elements or the colors that are not too important in the image are completely desaturated. Well, so Vibrance, that's what it does guys. It desaturates just certain colors which are not the dominant colors and the dominant colors of the image, it automatically detects which ones they are. It leaves them more rigid and more untouched guys. So in this case, we can go with a minus 11 on both of those values, just to desaturate a bit of the colors of the image. And now we're going to go to the tone curve. Now in tone curve, we don't want to go to this point over here, the parametric tone curve. We want to go to the point tone curve so we can achieve that nice contrast and those faded blacks. So we're going to create a point over here in the shadows, a point in the midtones over here, and then we're going to drag the shadows down the diagonal over here until we have a nice contrast on the image. Then the midtones, we're going to drag them just a bit up above of the diagonal. And then the blacks, we're going to raise them. Remember, remember that we want some faded out blacks. This is how we do it. We don't want to go to the extreme, just around here. Something like that, guys. Now we can see that the image is a lot more contrasty than the previous one. Now we're going to go on to the color grading part. Now, first up, HSL. Now in HSL, we can alter the colors from the image. We can desaturate them individually and also brighten them or darken them. So starting off with the red, we're going to go towards the positives all the way down to the plus 39s or something like that. Guys, remember that we had some images where he was wearing a jacket or there was a red car over there and the color was a more towards the oranges guys so we're going to make that those oranges or those reddish tones really pop then oranges we're not going to move them those will determine the skin tones so i normally don't like to move the oranges because if you alter the skin tones well the portraits if there is a if it's a portrait the image can, becomes completely unnatural then yellow is then yellows yellows control some parts of the green as we can see move them in up and down you can see how the greens are alterated what we want to do is take them towards the greenish tones because we want to emphasize those emerald greens so we're going to go with a positive we're going to go with a positive plus 30 or plus 40 and we're going to go with a plus 40 just towards the emeralds and then the greens of course will control large parts of the greens over here we want them towards the emeralds not towards the yellows so i'm going to go with a plus 50 percent or something like that guys now the greens are looking slightly more emerald guys over here but we're not quite finished just yet the aquas and the blues will control the skies but also the water guys so remember that we don't want anything too minty or too emerald or too dark we also we just want a bluish tone around the cobalt so for that i'm going to pull up the aquas to a plus 15 and then the blues to a minus 15 just around the same region to make them more uniform and to make them more cohesive in between them now purple just going to change it towards the bluish tones just in case we have any purple linings in the mountains in the background or in the sky we're going to turn them more towards the bluish tones okay now saturation we're just going to desaturate some of the colors for example the oranges will go with a minus 12 then the yellows again will control some of the greens we're going to go with a minus 20 and then the greens as well just desaturate them just a bit to make them a bit less vibrant just like that guys and then the blues the blues we're going to amp it up just to make those blues in the water really pop up so aquas we're going to go with a plus 10 and a plus 5 with the bluish tones over here okay next up in luminance we're just going to darken a bit of the greens so for example we're going to go with a minus 35 in the yellows just to make them a bit dark and then a minus 18 for the greenish tones we can see what we've done with the edge cell by clicking this button on and off and we're getting to the colors that we want but we're still not finished with the color. Now we're gonna go all the way down to color grading, which used to be called split toning. Now here, what we have is three color wheels, guys. Basically, we can add a tint or a color to the shadows, to the midtones, and to the highlights. So Lightroom automatically decides where to cut the image, what is shadows, what is midtones, and what is highlights. All we have to do is just select a tone, select a saturation, and select a luminance for that zone. So I'm gonna go individually with the color wheels, so for the bluish tones, for the shadows, we're going to add a bluish tone around, yeah, around this color over here. I'm going to choose over here, we can see the hue that we've chosen, we've chosen. We can also alter these values the same way we alter the sizes by dragging them left, up and down and also introducing the values manually. The saturation, I don't want to go too crazy. I'm just going to go with a 27 over here. And as you can see, immediately we have this um, reinforced greenish tone greens over here. They're a bit more emerald and we have that bluish tone in the shadows. 
Next up, mid tones, we're gonna skip them. In this part are gonna be the skin tones, so I'm not gonna move them as well, guys. And then we're just gonna go all the way down to the highlights and add another color, which again will be a bluish tone, maybe a more deepish tone over here, 227 if you wanna write it down. And we're gonna go with a saturation of 40%. As you can see, immediately we can see by clicking this button on and off, how the highlights have that bluish tint to them. So that's a thing that we like. Detail, I'm not gonna add any post sharpening that's gonna be done in the texture and in the clarity. And also in this case, I'm not gonna add any vignette. That vignette will depend on each image. We're gonna go all the way down to camera calibration. Now in camera calibration, what I'm gonna do is just alter a bit of the colors. I'm gonna make more emphasis on every single color that contains a bit of red by adding a bit of saturation maybe going up to a minus 20. We can see that if we pull it up, we make everything a bit more vibrant, everything that contains a bit of red. So it's just gonna pull them up around a plus 28. And then the green primary is just gonna turn it towards the emeralds with a plus 40, plus 43, I'm gonna settle. Now this image is not finished guys, we still have to retouch it, but the preset is complete and I'm gonna save it. Just gonna click on the panel here on the left and the plus sign, create a preset. Just gonna name it Thomas Lotter. And then remember, we don't want to check mark white balancing, exposure and contrast. Those are the values that we're going to alter for each individual image. And again, we don't want any noise reduction. We're going to do that individually and as well add some effects or like the, the grain or the post sharpening vignette or the post crop vignette. We're going to add them individually. So I'm just going to create it. Now this image, what would I do to make it better? Just maybe add some grading masks over here to the negatives to make this part a lot more dark and to bring a bit more emphasis on the subject on top and add a positive one over at the top. Not too much, something like that guys. And this image is looking a bit better. Now let's see how this preset performs on other images. So I have this portrait of my dog Emmett in the forest over here. Let's see how the preset performs. I've already added it to the edit like preset pack, which is over here. Remember this preset pack, which will be linked down below. You can check it out if you want to support me. So here I have Thomas Lotter, just gonna select it. And as we can see, this image is very underexposed. So what I want to do is just bring up a bit of the exposure. Remember that we left the exposure at the value of zero. So I'm just gonna bring it up to compensate and it's looking quite nice compared to the vibrant greens or very um, warmish greens that we had originally. Now in this case, I would add some clarity. As we can see, the clarity really makes the subject and the background really pop up. And it's looking quite nice, guys. Maybe not too much, just like that. I think we achieved a very nice moody tones that represent his style. Now we have this drone shot over here. First of all, I'm just going to crop it just to center a bit of the subject over here, which will be the car. Let's apply the preset. And again, this image is again underexposed. Just pull up a bit of the exposure. And we can see the greens have altered from this very vibrant, very lush towards this emerald green over here. Now in this case, I would add some vignette. Just go all the way down to the effects, add a negative vignette the midpoint pull it in just a bit and add a bit of feathering yeah and it's looking quite nice guys okay so we have this little macro image over here let's see the preset again it's quite underexposed and remember if the greens are a bit too much for you guys you can always alter them with the temperature tab over here just add a bit more temperature to make them a bit more lush or to make them a bit more warm so it's looking quite nice over here next i have this landscape shot within a car in Japan when we were cruising through the mountains. Let's see the preset. It's looking quite nice immediately, guys. Maybe I would add just a bit more exposure and a bit more contrast. And as we can see, all the yellows that we had in the greenish foliage has turned towards the emeralds. And this image is a lot more cool, representing the style from Thomas Lotter. And finally, we have this very cute portrait of a little dog that uh, it's my neighbor's dog. So I'm just gonna see how the preset performs in this one. It's looking quite nice. We can see those raised blacks over here. Just pull up a bit of the exposure and a bit of contrast and then maybe I would add some vignette. So in breakdown we have those faded out blacks, we have that nice contrast that he has, those emerald greens and also that bluish tint in the shadows and in the highlights. Now we're going to jump into his Iceland style which is basically the same preset we're just going to alter some of the values to adapt it to a more contrasty and more moody vibe. So here I have this image of myself in the border of a crater just going to apply the preset as we can see down below we can see that I've already made this preset previously so we can see the final results or what we want to achieve it's a very contrasty with very deep blues in the shadows so we're just going to change some of the values from the base preset I've selected it and the values that we're going to change 
are in the exposure and also in the color grading part. So, so first of all, we're gonna make this style a bit more contrasty by reducing the shadows and the blacks. So the blacks, we're gonna go from the minus 19 all the way down to a minus 30 or minus 32 or something like that, guys. Then the shadows, we're gonna pull them down, not too much, all the way down to a, minus, a plus 27 or something like that. And immediately the image is looking a bit more contrasty. Now, in this case, we're gonna go down to the tone curve and just add a bit more contrast. And remember in this case, the blacks weren't too faded out. So I'm just gonna pull this point a bit down and pull down a bit of the shadows, just like that, to make a bit more contrasty and very nice, guys. And now we're achieving that style that he has. And then in HSL, remember that we don't want those emerald greens. We want them changing towards the yellow. So here we have some emerald greens in the background over here of the pines. So the greens are gonna to go to a minus 100, also the yellows. And now everything has changed towards that yellowish tone which is representing the winter of Iceland. Now that's all the changes that we're gonna do in HSL. Remember that we can also alter a bit of the reds. Remember that we had some dark reds in the cabins in Iceland. So we're just gonna pull the luminance down and then we're gonna move down to color grading. Now in color grading in the shadows, first of all, we're gonna change the hue for a darker blue over here, something like that guys, and change a bit of the saturation, just put it up maybe to a plus 37, something like that. Immediately we can see the bluish tint is a lot darker in the shadows, representing that vibe that we had in Iceland. And then the highlights, we're gonna alter them as well, changing towards a more darkish, even darkish blue. I'm gonna settle with the hue at 255, and the saturation, just gonna pull it just a bit down, not too much. Remember, we don't want those bluish skies, just a bit, just giving that bluish, darkish hint into the sky. And finally, we're going to go all the way down to camera calibration. And over here, we don't want on any of these values. We're going to deselect them. And basically, that's the preset. We're going to save it. And in this case, I've already saved it as Thomas Lotter Iceland. Here we can see the Thomas Lotter, the original, the greenish tones, and then the Iceland. So here you have this image of my friend Kevin. Let's apply the Thomas Lotter Iceland. And it's looking quite nice guys maybe a bit too bright for iceland maybe i would pull down a bit of the exposure and a bit more contrast and it's looking quite nice maybe pull down a bit of the temperature to make everything a bit more blue it's looking fantastic guys now here we have this image of some of my friends when i went on a hike the other week so i'm just going to apply the presets to see the differences for example if we apply the lotter original here we can see those bluish tints and those greenish vibes those emerald vibes in this image it's looking quite nice it would fit the style from his Instagram feed. But then if we want to add that Iceland vibe, just click on the other one. And as you can see, it's a lot more dark, a lot more deep with the blues, but also it's a very nice style. It just has the same base as the other one, just altering a bit of the contrast. Once again, this is in the same hype, just going back to the car because it was pouring. So let's see, first of all, how Lotter 1 performs. It's looking quite nice. Immediately we can see how those greens, those vibrant greens are turned towards the emeralds and those bluish tints appear in the background. It's looking quite nice. Then the Iceland one, it's a bit more dark, a bit more moody. It's quite nice, guys. So that's my breakdown and analysis of Thomas Lotter style. Remember that these two presets that I've just created, I've linked them in the Edelike preset pack, which will be linked down below. If you want to check it out and support me in that manner, that's a way you can ensure I don't starve to death. But remember that the purposes of these tutorials are not to copy or to rob people's styles, guys. The purposes of these tutorials are for you guys to learn how to analyze and break down styles and how to achieve certain looks in Lightroom so you can go and achieve your personal look someday. So that's gonna be it for today, guys. Remember, if you did like the video and found it helpful, just give it a like, share it with a friend. All of those things really help. Subscribe if you aren't already. I'm Tony Fuentes. Don't forget to smile. Cheers to all of you. See you in the next one.